Welcome back everybody to another little episode of Bits and Bobs and Surprises. Well, 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 everything was going really well. And then this morning I woke up to this. This is my new growth, or one of them at least, on my Dendrobium nobili. And look what it's done. It has completely collapsed and rotted off from the crown. This is mealybug damage. And for some reason, that bougainvillea that I keep so, so trimmed next to my Top Gun hot shelf on the east facing side of my property, it still produces mealybugs and I can't seem to control them as well there as I am able to control them on my orchids. I have two orchids that are currently magnets. Although I have my tortilla under control, I saw them, took care of them, everything is tickety-boo there. And then I saw this nobly a couple of days ago, it was showing little fluffy things. And I'm like, okay, took it off the shelf, put it in the shade, let it cool down a bit. And then I sprayed it profusely with alcohol. And I'm extremely surprised to see these leaves have just popped off and there was rot inside. And this new growth is soft and there's rot going on in there as well. So we're going to address that, take care of it and get rid of it. So because the rot is so close to the base here, I'm not going to worry too much about cinnamon and the like. I don't want to affect the base of the plant in such a way that I might compromise roots that are going down in there. You can see the roots growing there. It's too close for comfort. I'm going to take the educated risk of just cutting off this growth and treating the area with hydrogen peroxide. Bothers me. I have lots and lots of growths in here, but taking out one too many. Now, I do the silicon treatment, but this one has been in bloom up until about four weeks ago. So its first silicon treatment was only roughly two weeks ago. And I swear by that stuff. Um, my tortilla also gets the silicon treatment, but it was mounted. And now that it is potted, it only just recently got the silicon treatment as well. So I'm kind of boiling down the fact that these two are the ones that are a little bit more susceptible to the mealybug because I have about 40 orchids in the same shelf with different foliage, not all heart cuticle foliage, and they're all fine. My maxillarias are fine. They're okay, but you can see this is not a good bulb and it started from the top. Look at this. We're getting there. Papilio nante panduculata. Three buds are forming. So I'm managing to keep up with this one in the humidity and hydration wise because I moved it away from a much more exposed sunny location to this location, whereas previously this one got like, I don't know, uh, let, me let me guess, seven hours of sun during the hot months from June to August. And I kept spraying and spraying. But uh, when those buds showed up, I moved both of them, because I have to, they're all on one pole, into this more protected area, but much, much closer to the back fence, because I can spray her, and then the neighbor comes around in the hot months two times a day and sprays her side of the garden with water. And there is a little microclimate here of 
high humidity, which is awesome. The unfortunate thing is that she probably won't bloom. My Chao Praia probably won't bloom again because now she gets maybe only four or five hours of sun because in the morning this side of the house is very protected. However, I've got my growing tips back by moving her. If you remember, these were failing because of the hot, hot area and the wind. And look at them. They're back to being big, large, luscious and continuing to grow. So it's a win-win or a lose-lose. I don't know. But I'm still waiting for blooms on the Chao Praia. And you can see how much she has grown. This was the hail damage from early spring. And these, this is the section now from here on up that is growing clean. And that is so far the summer growth. But no blooms, no spikes, no sign of nothing. Papilionantha, however, is holding on and we still have this spike. So I'm look, looking forward to at least getting one bloom out of this community totem pole. Holcoglossum Kimbalianum is growing fantastically for me. I'm letting that moss do its thing down there. That's a fine by me. But just look at this. It is an amazing, amazing orchid. I love it. And no, it has not bloomed for me yet. But you can see the growth it's put on so far. This was the hail damage of early spring. And then this, all this, is so far the summer growth. I am astounded. I love it. Artwork and orchids said to me that I could keep it much colder in order to trigger a spike. I went as far down as oof, 12 degrees and then one night it got to 10 and I got nervous. 10 degrees Celsius, so yeah, I brought it in. I don't know if I left it out long enough. Uh, two weeks is what I put, out, put up with, but when the temperature went down to 10 degrees, I was bringing it in at night. I have to be honest, I, I got a bit scared. Um, it just feels so cold and it doesn't seem right that an orchid would do uh, or thrive on 10 degrees. But hey, I've, I've had lower temperatures, so, and they've done okay. There has been damage, but I'm so wary about this one because of its delicate kind of growth habit, you know? It's like a tolumnia. You, you just let them get too cold one night and there's permanent damage. So I don't know, but Holcoglossum kimberlianum, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous orchid. It's growing superbly for me, absolutely. I can't complain. I have two plantlets down here growing. There's one here. You can see with its own root system and it's now this high. That is one year's growth in total because it started last year. And I have another little plantlet shooting off on this side right here. And it's got its own root system. And this started late last year. This came out really late last year, so it's a little bit behind. But my goodness, it's a beast of an orchid and it's gorgeous and I love it, but I don't know, it won't bloom. So it gets morning sun in my climate now um, for the first four hours, then it's in shade. For the hottest, hottest part of the day, it's in shade. I'm, I still love it. I'd like some blooms though, but I still love it. And then here are my little Schomburkios. I have the Thompsoniana splits that we did a repot on because it was like not a good smell in the pot, but they're doing really well. Here's the cut from the back end or yeah, the back end. And you can see with the indentation of where it crammed up against the pot there, the previous pot. So that's from the back end, gives me an idea. And then you can see now the new growths are developing beautifully. The root growth is astonishing. It's coming on really well. And uh, yes, Michael McCarthy, I have them now in full sun. From morning till evening, full sun. Here's the second growth. And uh, they are coming on superbly. Here's the other piece. Maybe the front piece if one wants to consider that. If you remember, it was growing like in a semicircle. So it has two growths coming along. They're not as far developed as the other piece, but hey, there's plenty of time. And I do spray the surface of this 
these two pots regularly because I don't want the leka to get like too hot or something so I make sure that the roots continue growing and then here in the back is the tibicinis I am trying to get it to grow in this my preferred method of leka and self-watering it's a hit and miss situation we've I've had two three new growths since I got it a year ago they're very small and stunted but I don't see that this plant has been around for too long you can see the back pseudobulbs here are smaller and then this one's drying up that's okay but this is the biggest growth yet it's a vigorous grower to be honest but there are i don't think there are any roots in the pot so i'm also contemplating what to do about this one whether just to stay patient because i don't see any other deterioration on this plant and i'm watching closely to see how the pseudobulbs are responding reacting the fact that one is shriveling up, oh, that's fine. I'm not too concerned about that. It can happen. But I'm watching closely regarding roots, if there's further shriveling, if I need to intervene. But it is really well positioned for any root growth to go into the pot. So far, no dice. But we can wait and observe. So these are my Schomburkias or Myrmacophilias. Just a quick update on these guys. Ah, yes, the days when I was mounting with sphagnum moss. That was not so long ago, but there's other inspiration going on in my head. So maybe this will be the last time I mounted with sphagnum moss, but we'll see. But this is Eonopsis popcorn haruri. And you can see that one new growth has kind of failed there. It still has a little bit of green inside, but it's, it's, it's a goner, I think. The second new growth is developing nicer roots than it did prior to the mount. I had this in a basket with small lava rock. It wasn't doing anything for it. The pseudobulbs are still as shriveled as they were when I mounted it again. So I'm not seeing any progress there. But we have one spike coming as you can see. Look at that. It's better than nothing. So I'm hopeful that maybe the other growth will produce a spike as well. But even if it doesn't, I am happy to see that we can enjoy some popcorn Haruri blooms not too far in the future. And just keep watching the progress on the root production of this orchid because I think that's what it needs the most. Roots. So yeah, a little update on popcorn Haruri. We have a spike. Woohoo! Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. I don't care who you are, what you did, where you're from, as long as you continue to smell like that. There were some parts of a song in there, <laughs> on purpose. <laughs> Banda Tessalata Black, if she is or isn't, I do not care. This one has grown on me since the last time I filmed her. I've been trying to think yes, no, yes, no. I've been very indecisive. Oh, but her fragrance. I am sold. I am sold on this. The jasmine is as intense as one would expect. And it comes in through to the living room when it's a warm night, which we have now. Oh, and I know who's playing. Gorgeous, gorgeous fragrance. Maybe not the most striking of blooms, but there's a certain daintiness and prettiness about them. But boy, you smell like that. Oh, you are a keeper, whoever you are. I love it. Don't you love the sound of that? I love cicadas. I love cicadas. It just reminds me that if, you don't, if you're not already hot, you know it's hot. When they come out and make that noise, it's my favorite. And I'm sorry about the gate clanging. It shouldn't get interrupted like that, but isn't that a gorgeous noise? It just oozes heat and summer and ah, everything that I like. And I like this little neo Phoenicia as well. On my label, it says Rainbow Forest. 
but yeah, I do believe it's a peaches. It has the hallmarks of a peaches and it smells gorgeous. So rainbow forest or peaches, whoever you are, you're pretty and you can stay. Love it. But just to sign off, look, I mentioned in my blooms for you video that normally, well, last year I got three spikes and here we have spike number two. <laughs> So, let me just turn her around. Spike number two. Lovely, jubbly. Fantastic opening up. But there's more. Spike number three. I like to see that a lot. That gives me opportunities and options. But there's more. Spike number four. Where can I see you? There. Spike number four. I'll take it. I'll take it. So I can't see anything on my screen. I hope that was in focus. In the meantime, let me turn you around again because you're prettier on this side. Thank you everybody so very much for watching. Quick update of some things that have been going on in previous videos and a little bit of rot to deal with. Surprise, surprise. I am anyway. But thank you everyone. I really appreciate your company and I hope that you enjoyed a little bit of the sound of the crickets. It's one of my favorite. It's music to my ears. Have a wonderful day everybody and I'll see you next time. Bye.